Hey everyone and welcome back to Microtech Canada's online MTCNA course. In this video, that is episode 32, we are going to discuss the three main types of expected traffic on a given network. We will first review these three types of traffic, going over the behavior of each of them one by one, and then take a more detailed look at traffic logs in router OS. As mentioned in the previous video, from the viewpoint of the class AP, this is the LAN or local area network, and this is the WAN or the wide area network, schematically shown using these two LAN and WAN clouds. On a similar note, we discussed the physical in and out interfaces and how they were determined by the direction of traffic as well as the relation of the physical layer in the packet flow diagram. Now, using the class AP as the reference device on the MTCNA home lab, let's look at the three main types of expected network traffic. First, there is output. Output traffic is generated by the router, that is the class AP. It is directed to a destination address outside the class AP on either the LAN or the WAN. Therefore, only the out interface of the class AP is engaged and the IP addresses of the class AP will be the source address of this traffic. So, for output traffic, packets will be generated from the class AP to hosts on its LAN or WAN, meaning the active interfaces are out interfaces. To see output traffic in practice on our MTCNA home lab, we will send ping packets from the class AP to the addresses of 8888 as well as 10001 on the trainee router. Before sending our ping packets, in order to monitor the log records of the ongoing traffic, we need to set up firewall filters. Using the plus add button in the firewall submenu, we can define a new rule with the output chain, setting the protocol to ICMP since we are sending ping packets that use the ICMP protocol. Next, in the action tab, we need to set the action to log, tick the log option, and then write the prefix of our choice that is OICMP for output traffic to easily identify the necessary records. Now, with our filter rule in place, we can open up the log window and send the ping packet from the class AP to the address of 8888. As you can see, the log window starts showing some traffic records. With a closer look, you can see that these records show the OICMP prefix with the output chain. The in interface is unknown since no physical in interface is engaged for the output traffic. The out interface is Ether1 to Internet that is directing traffic toward the address of 8888 as shown in the picture in the corner. Moreover, you can see that the IP address of 172.31.252.100 of the class AP is the source address of this traffic. For another example of the output traffic, we can ping the trainee router. As the ping begins, you can see new log records. The chain and the prefix are the same as previous records. The in interface is also unknown, same as before. However, as you can see, the physical out interface is now WLAN1 to class toward the trainee router, and the source address for this traffic is 10.0.0.254. The benefits of setting up firewall configurations on output traffic are rather specific and limited and they can be used to control ongoing output traffic for network monitoring and troubleshooting. However, their use cases are outside the scope of the MTCNA course and we'll deal with them in future programs. The next type of traffic is input. Input traffic is generated from outside the class AP that is either LAN or WAN and is directed to a destination IP address inside the class AP. As a result, only an in interface on the class AP will be engaged and one of the IP addresses of the class AP will be the destination address for this input traffic. For input traffic, packets will be generated by IP hosts on the local or wide area networks toward the class AP, meaning the active interfaces will be in interfaces. To see input traffic in practice, we'll send ping packets from the trainee router to the class AP. To this end, we'll first open up the trainee router. Next, we will disable the output firewall filter so that we do not receive output log records. Instead, we'll create a new filter with the input chain, the ICMP protocol, the log action, and IICMP as the prefix for this input firewall filter. Now, with the input firewall filter created, we can start sending ping packets to the class AP 
from the train new router. With a closer look at our log records, we can see that they now carry the IICMP prefix and are based on the input chain. This time, the physical in interface of WLAN1 to class is active, while the physical out interface is unknown, since no data packet is leaving the router. The source address is 10001, while the destination address is 10.0.0.254, which is assigned to the class AP. As for firewall configurations on the input traffic, they can be used quite effectively to accept trusted traffic, drop unwanted suspicious traffic, and keep the router itself safe from online threats. And the third type of expected network traffic is forwarded traffic. Forwarded traffic, as the name suggests, is generated outside the router and passed through the class AP toward other destinations on either LAN or WAN. As a result, both an in interface and an out interface on the class AP will be engaged for this traffic. However, neither the source nor the destination addresses of forwarded traffic will be among the assigned addresses of the class AP. Thus, in this case, the traffic is either generated by a host on the LAN or the WAN and directed to a host other than the class AP. To see this type of traffic in practice, we'll send ping packets from the trainee router through the class AP to the final destination address of 8888. To do so, just like we did with the output filter, we'll first disable the input firewall filter rule. Then, we will similarly create a new filter rule with the forward chain, the ICMP protocol, the log action to receive the necessary records in the log window, and the FICMP prefix. And now, with the forward filter rule in place, we'll ping the address of 8888 from R2 or the trainee router. With a close look at the log records, you can see that the records carry the FICMP prefix and are based on the forward chain. This time, the in interface of the class AP for this forwarded traffic is WLAN1 to class and the out interface is Ether1 to Internet. The source address is 10.0.0.1 on the trainee router and the destination address is 8888. Also, as you can see, the NAT or the network address translation is active for the passing of this traffic. Moreover, the class AP is also forwarding the reply of 8888 back to the trainee router. Therefore, you can see another log record with the same prefix and chain. However, the interfaces of this pink response are vice versa, which means the in interface is now Ether1 to Internet and the out interface is WLAN1 to class. Forwarding the ping response from 8888 to 10001 using its active NAT process. Setting firewall configurations on forwarded traffic are also highly practical with many use cases. These settings can set up your router as an edge device, receiving trusted traffic, rejecting suspicious data, and safeguarding the client equipment and networks behind the edge router. Okay then, in this video, you acquired a good understanding of how traffic behaves on different chains and how we can benefit from setting firewall configurations on different types of network traffic. In the next video, we'll use different examples to show the use cases of firewall configurations for small to medium businesses and help you gain a deeper knowledge about the way packets move through the packet flow diagram. Many thanks for watching this video. As always, give us your questions in the comment section and subscribe to our channel if you like our videos.